without further ado, we're going to get started with the last session. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and we will rock and roll here. And like I said, this is my favorite topic to talk about. It's integrating basically your workflow with your projects page. So the two of them can run in sync with each other. And so we're going to talk about organizing your workflows today so that when you're running your workflows with your different clients, you can go to your projects page and know exactly what's happening with your clients at any moment. So that's what we're going to dive into today and level up the workflow from what we looked at yesterday. So before we do that, though, um, I'll just go over the agenda just so everyone knows kind of what the uh, what the agenda is for today. The first thing we're going to talk about is just do a quick recap of leads and jobs, just so people are familiar with that, because it's going to be very important for today. Then we're going to talk about project statuses. We're going to talk about tags in the projects page. And then the last thing we're going to do is incorporate all of that together and actually show you how to organize your workflow. So let's jump in here. We're going to do a quick recap um, on leads and jobs and how leads and jobs work we talked about this a lot on the first and second session but on your projects page your projects are basically split up between two different statuses leads and jobs leads are going to be anyone who is not booked with you yet that means however it pertains to your business that you don't consider them a booked client yet they're simply just going through hearing about pricing maybe have a consultation with them you're still trying to get them to actually purchase your product the job section is for anyone who is booked with you so that means they have signed a contract or they have paid an invoice or maybe they've done both of those things and you consider them a locked in booked client so when we're talking about our phases which we looked at yesterday we built out the three different phases that we have inquiry and booking those are all going to be revolved around the leads because when you're pitching pricing to somebody they're not booked yet so usually those two phases inquiry and booking that's all in the lead section and then once they actually do book with you then you can consider them a job and that's going to be everything in your booked workflow if you will so that's just a quick rundown it's going to make a lot more sense once we dive in and start talking about uh project statuses so let's go ahead here and we're going to talk about these and the purpose of project statuses on your projects page project statuses in dubsado are designed to show where the client is at in your workflow process it's about location of where they're at in your business process or your workflow process a great way to think about this and this is my favorite analogy to use if you've ever seen some of my other webinar series that i've done i love to use this analogy because it makes so much sense your workflow is your entire customer journey from initiation to completion or like what we've been talking about from the moment that they're interested in working with you all the way until that project is completed that's your entire business process or your entire workflow what your project statuses are are the major cities or points of interest along the way of that process so it's all of the big moments or milestones that you have in your entire process that's how you can think about it so in this road trip analogy that we have you have all of these different things like yellowstone national park and mount rushmore and the field of dreams which is in iowa which is where i'm from shout out field of dreams niagara falls all of these different uh points of interest or major cities if someone is taking this road trip and i'm looking at this i can tell you oh they're at mount rushmore or they're at the field of dreams or niagara falls i can see that from a top level view how this translate translates into dubsado language is something like this where they start over in portland it's a new inquiry and then they go to consultation booked proposal sent contract signed i can basically see where they're at on the journey in the workflow so that's kind of the relation that you can think about a project status is it shows where that client is at in their overall process 
So these statuses is a, is a good way to identify the different milestones that you want your client to pass through. It should essentially match your workflow. So you can already start to see where this is going to come into play here. But we get this question a lot. A lot of people say, well, what should my project statuses be? I'm not really sure what I should make my statuses. The key to figuring out what your project statuses should be is to ask yourself what milestones in your workflow process are important to you. There might be someone who has the exact same workflow process, but there's different milestones in that process that are more important to one person than the other. So this is where you can look at your workflow process. And if you want to, you can take your written out process that you have in Notion or whatever platform you're using, and you can look and at your process here and say, okay, out of this whole process, what parts are important to me? Which parts do I need to be notified of? Or do I need to see on my projects page that they've passed through? Same thing if we're looking at this overall road trip here, I need to pick out which parts are important to me. And those are going to end up being my project statuses. So project statuses can be as macro or as granular as you want them to be. If I'm literally wanting to watch every single tiny thing that happens in my workflow, I can do that. If I'm only worried about, I just need to know when they sign their contract, I can do it that way. I like to tell people that with project statuses, it's, there's pluses and minuses to them. The pluses is that you can be extremely creative with them. You can come up with all sorts of cool things, which I'm going to try to show you as much as possible today of different things you can do with them. Or the cons of it is, is that you really can be creative as you want to be. And if you aren't really familiar with the triggers in Dubsado and how those work, then it can almost be a hindrance because you don't really know what it is that you're supposed to be doing there. So the, the uh, options that you have can either make it amazing or it can make it a little tough if you're not really familiar with what's going on in your workflow. So how you can think about a project status is it's basically a reaction to something that's happened. It's a reaction to a previous action, either something that's happened or something that you need to do now because something happened. So for example, I'm going to give you kind of a, a layout of how this works and hopefully you can understand how the project status is mixed in with the workflow here. So as the workflow is running the actions, it's also going to simultaneously be moving the project down that timeline that you have created. So for example, if in our workflow, we're sending out the 30 minute consultation to the client, I can then do a project status change that's going to move them into a waiting consultation. So I've sent out the scheduler. Now I'm waiting for them to book. So the awaiting consultation is a response to the workflow sending out that scheduler to them. So the scheduler goes out, then a project status change immediately after to shift them into a waiting consultation. Then once the client has booked with that scheduler, I can move them into consultation booked. So it's literally doing things in the workflow top down and at the same time, it's moving them left to right down the timeline. So that's in essence what this is doing. But when we actually get in to build the workflow, it'll make a little more sense there. So it's a reaction to something that's happening that the workflow is doing. It's updating you on what's happening. So I'm going to give you some typical projects, project status categories. Now, Something I do want to say here is remember from day one where I said the goal of this whole series is for inspiration, not necessarily uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for imitation. That's what it is. So with this, I'm going to give you a lot of examples. You don't have to use these, but just so you have an understanding of what these project statuses are designed for, I'm going to talk through some of them here. 
So for instance, with scheduling, if you're using our Dubsado scheduler, you can do things like awaiting booking, waiting for them to schedule, like what we just talked about, or maybe they have booked a session with you or scheduled a session. You can make something like that into a project status. Forms, if you've sent a form to someone, let's say you have a questionnaire go out to them, you could update your status to questionnaire sent so you can see from your projects page that the workflow has done that. Or it could be once they complete a form or form submitted. Or what I'm going to show you today is how you can actually use a follow up status if they haven't filled out the form. So we're going to talk about that as well. Contracts, if you're sending out a contract to a client, you could say, oh, the contract's been sent or a very typical one contract has been signed by the client. Emails, if there's a certain email, like let's say you send out a welcome packet email, you could say welcome packet email sent if you want to. So any type of email that you're wanting to monitor to make sure that it's gone out, you could use a status change like that invoices if you're sending out an invoice to a client you could say invoice sent or deposit paid or maybe just paid or active is another one that people like to use there so it's all revolved around invoices then you can do tasks so for example if you want one of your project statuses to be send a thank you card to this person so when you go to your projects page you can see all the people that you need to send a card to. You could use something for tasks that need to be done. Another one that I'm going to use today is something like needs review to review that project to see if I want to move them further or not. So it could be tasks that you need to get done. The other thing is time. So you can use project statuses in relation to how close to the project date it is or after the project date. So if I want to say three months out from the project date or two months out or one month out, we're going to talk about that today. You can have it in relationship to the project date or an appointment. So that's something that you can utilize them for. And the last one is based off of phases because some people, if you're in the design phase or the design industry, you might have a research phase, a design phase, a delivery phase. So you can also think about your statuses as phases, but out of all of these different things here, the most important thing to know is that this is all revolved around where the client is at. It's about being able to see, okay, they've completed that or, or they've submitted that, or I've sent this to them. It's all about a timeline here. The other thing that you'll notice is that a lot of these are all past tense verbs. It's saying we're booked, we're scheduled, sent, completed, submitted. It's all a reaction to something that the workflow has done. So you can think about it in that way as a project status of something's happened. It's a reaction to that happening. That's what a project status technically is. So now what we're going to do before we jump into tags i want to talk about actually building those project statuses so that you know where they're at and how to build them so let me go into dubsado here and on my dubsado page up across the top here you'll see that i have all of these different statuses across the top and these are ones that i've just created and i have everything here if you look at all these statuses across the top this all has to do with things that are lead focused, things that mean they have not actually booked with me yet. If you remember from our process, what actually makes someone booked, at least for the process that I've written, is once they've signed the contract and they've paid the deposit. So they have to do both things in order to become a booked client. So if you're looking at the page here, you can see contract signed, to me, technically, there's still a lead, even though they've signed the contract, I'm still waiting for that deposit to be paid, which is on my right hand side. And that's the first status in the job section. So if I'm looking at my timeline here, this whole thing should literally be my workflow. That's really what it is. It's just the big milestones of what's happening. Now, once they get over into jobs over here, if I open this up, 
these are all different things that are happening once they become a job. So they've paid their deposit. So now they're officially booked. Then welcome packet sent six months out, three months out, one month out this week post wedding. So you can kind of see it's still just a progression. I'm going down the line of what's happening in my process. Now, this could be uh, once they're booked with you, it could be research phase, then building phase, then delivery phase. So you can think about it in your own context of your business. It's just those milestones that they're going through. So how you build these is by clicking on the customize button on the right hand side over here. And when you click that, it's going to open up and it's going to be the very first thing you see at the top here. Now, I have all of my statuses built out already, so yours is probably going to look different than mine. But what you'll do basically is up in the top right hand corner, you'll click add status. And when you click that, it's going to allow you to title your status there and you can choose whether it's a lead status or a job status. So what you should really do, like I said, is go through your process that you have written out, because remember, your statuses should reflect your process. If I put in a status that says um, sub agreement submitted, but I don't have a sub agreement in my process, then that status doesn't mean anything to me. So you really can only build your statuses if you have your process written because those statuses should reflect what you're doing in your process. So look at your process and decide, hey, I wanna be reminded that they're this far in the process. Even if you just start with contract sign and that's the only one that you have, that still will help because you can move them from the lead area into the job area just by that simple contract signed or invoice paid um, movement there. So that's essentially how you can build your statuses is by going into the projects page, customize, add status, and then you can build out as many as you want to. The other cool thing about this as well, since we're talking about this uh, area here, and we get this question a lot, so I'll try to get out in front of it. You'll notice when you have your statuses built out here that there's little boxes next to each one. What those boxes are for is whichever one you select, that's going to be your default status when you go to your projects page. So for example, if I go to deposit paid and I check that box there, if I go to my projects page now, it will always open up to deposit paid every time. It's like your default status that will always populate there. A lot of people usually ask, hey, it's always coming up on leads. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be this status. You can do it that way by customizing it and choosing which one you want as your default status. A great one, if you're in the event space, is you could have this week as your default status. And what that means is every time I come to my projects page, it opens up on this week and I can literally see out of bird's eye view everyone who is within one week of their actual project date. And I'm going to show you how to incorporate that into the workflow. But just so you're aware, that's what those boxes are for is to basically give you a default status. So you can have fun with that put those emojis in there make it really fun if you want to but that's how you can build your project statuses and as you can see it's all based off of where they're at in the workflow now let's move to tags tags are a little uh less hard to explain because tags in dubsado are designed to show you what type of project you're working on people are a lot more familiar with the term tag because you're tagging it based based off of a group that you actually want to associate different projects with. So a good way to think about it, tag and type. Those two things go together. Think about tags literally just like hashtags. So in social media, if I put hashtag Dubsado on one of my posts, if someone clicks on that hashtag Dubsado, it's going to show all the posts that have Dubsado tagged to it. So it's the same idea in Dubsado where once you tag a project, there's a way where you can 
filter, and I'm going to show you how to do that, where you can filter through all the projects that have that specific tag on it. So they can help you categorize your projects based off of service type or a group or a demographic, any other identifying class you want to put your projects into, you can use tags to help facilitate that. So when I'm on my projects page here and I'm going to click on uh, all jobs, what you're going to see with each project here is you're going to see this little colored dot off to the right of each one of these projects. And when I hover over those, you can see that it says engagement or uh, anniversary or wedding. This one is an anniversary. So it's tagging those projects based off of the type of project that I'm working on or the type of client. So that's how you can think about tags where you can create these is underneath the customize button so it's the same place as project statuses are when i click there and i scroll down to the bottom you'll see that the tags are down here now one of the coolest things about tags is that you can put as many of them on a project as you want to and that's going to be very important between distinguishing is this considered a status or a tag because some people are using their statuses as tags when they really should be tags because you can put as many of them as you want to on here. Like, for example, if I click add tag here, let's say because this is, you know, a wedding photography brand, essentially, let's just say that we want to see all of our out of state people, anyone that we're doing that's out of state, I can make that a tag or let's say that we have another tag that is called in state and i don't know if you're in an industry that would follow along with this but you can make these different tags here now on a project and i'm going to show you how to do this in an automated way but in here if i click on this particular project over here on the left hand side let's say for example that kathy is an engagement session that is out of state so now I can put as many different tags as I want to on this project to help me uh, better identify this project and the group that it's in. Once you have your tags on here, well, actually, I'm going to save that for the end. So it makes it makes more sense in a combination. But just so you know, at least for right now, you're able to group these together. And now on the projects page, I can see clearly that Kathy is an engagement session that is out of state so now i can identify very clearly this is the type of project um, that i'm working on in that specific scenario so some example tags i want to give you some ideas here because i know it helps to have something that's a little bit more relatable so i came up with a couple things just so you kind of understand for coaching it could be one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching or you're running a mastermind or life coaching or career coaching, a way that you can identify what type of coaching you're doing in the design realm. You could do logo design, web design, graphic design, website maintenance. So any type of thing with design, you can create different ones there. We kind of already talked about this, but photography, you could do weddings, anniversary, family, corporate, senior headshots. All of those different things would make great tags in the system. And then for marketing, social media, branding, affiliate marketing, content marketing, email marketing, if you do different types of marketing, you could create those as different tags as well. So literally anything that you can think of, and actually I think it's my next slide here, is the key to figuring out what your tag should be is to ask yourself, what types of clients or projects am I constantly wanting to search for? If you can get that in your head, and even maybe when I asked that question, you immediately had a response of, oh, I'm always trying to find these types of clients or these types of clients. Another great one would be uh, if you're an accountant, then maybe you could do like 2022 clients or 2021 and maybe make the different years your different tags if you want to. It could be a whole host of different things. But basically ask yourself, what types of clients and projects am I always searching for? That is probably a good indication, at least to get you started.
started of what your tags should be. So this is why you should not make your tags out of your project statuses because projects can only be in one place at a time as far as a timeline is concerned but projects could have multiple tags and i'll give you an example here of what i mean by this so let's take the industry of web design for example sometimes when i'm working with people i'll see that they might have web design website maintenance logo design all is these different statuses across the top now technically from a functionality standpoint you can do that but one there's not really a great way to automate it but two what happens if you work with a client that is doing web design is also doing logo design with you and you're also going to be doing website maintenance for them technically you're doing all three of those things but a project can only be in one status at a time. So that's why in that scenario, it would be more helpful to maybe have a active status potentially or where they're at in the design process. And then you tag them with logo design, web design, website maintenance, and that project has all three on there. So that's how you can kind of think about the differences between the two. This is where they're at and then you have tags for what type of client you're working with. So I hope that makes sense on kind of how those two things are designed there between statuses and tags. And now what we're gonna do for the rest of the session here, and we have a good amount of time so I can show you how to incorporate all of these things. We're gonna talk about organizing the workflow and actually adding in those statuses and tags into your workflow and kind of taking it to that 2.0 level. So let's go back to our workflow that we were looking at yesterday. And when you're in here, I talked about it right at the end yesterday, but if I were to take this workflow, this inquiry workflow that we have built here, and I add it into a project, this will technically work from a content sending perspective. It's going to send out the consultation to them. It'll send out the questionnaire. It'll send out the follow-ups. It'll create the to-dos. At least the process is intact. But what this is not going to do is move them down that timeline because I haven't added that into the workflow yet. Once you have this built out, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start adding in status changes is what it's called. So in this inquiry workflow, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to start walking through how you can take this and expand on it to give it that movement that you want in your projects page. So here, the first status that I have is check availability. Now I'm going to show you how you can do this without the workflow where you can have it automatically get put into check availability when they fill out their lead capture. I'm going to show you that at the end, but the first status after that is awaiting consultation okay so what do i want to do here once i send out that scheduler to the client i want it to update into awaiting consultation because that's going to signify to me on the projects page that the scheduler's gone out to them but they have not booked yet so i'm waiting for them to schedule an appointment so here's what i'm going to do I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to click add action. And what we're going to use specifically today is we're going to use change project status and add tag. Those are the only two we're going to play around with today. So we're only going to look at those two actions. I'm going to click change project status because I'm telling the workflow once it meets these stipulations, I want it to move into that next status. So what we're going to use for our trigger and one thing i'm going to mention right here before we continue with this is your ability to use project statuses is solely concentrated around how well you know what the triggers are because a project status change as you can see right here it's only about what's happening in the triggers so if you aren't familiar with what you can do as far as the triggers are concerned then you can't really use project statuses the way that you want them to. So here, if I say change project status, 
the time frame on this is immediately after the scheduler goes out. Now, remember from our third session, we talked about if there's not a trigger that fits well enough here, then we're going to use after all previous actions are complete. I don't have anything in here that says once a scheduler is sent out. So I'm going to use after all previous actions are complete. And the status that I'm going to change it to is going to be awaiting consultation. OK, so now let me show you how to put this in. So I'll click apply. And here's my project status change here down at the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this into where it fits chronologically. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right after that scheduler goes out. So here's what's happening. Once I send that scheduler to them or the workflow does that, it sends out the scheduler. It's going to automatically update them into awaiting consultation because this is happening immediately after what's happening before it runs. So it sends the scheduler and then it immediately goes into awaiting consultation. Now, my next one is once they book, I want to know when someone books on that scheduler. That's important to me. So what I'm going to do now is click add action, change project status. You're going to see a lot of that today. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to watch that consultation call scheduler. Once they book on that, I want it to move into consultation booked. So I'm going to say immediately after the appointment has been scheduled. And if you remember from yesterday, we were talking about how you can only use appointment triggers if it's watching something that's in the workflow. And the only scheduler we have in this workflow is the consultation one. So I'm watching that consultation here immediately after they book on that consultation, I want to move it into consultation booked. So that's going to be my status there. I'm watching that consultation. The moment they book on it, boom, the workflow is going to pick up the project and move it into consultation booked. So let me apply that. And then chronologically where that fits is going to be just right after that one. So this is what's happened so far. We've sent out the scheduler. It goes into a waiting booking and then it goes into consultation booked once they've scheduled. Now, the next one that we have on here, let's go back to our projects page so we can take a look. So we've covered these two. Now we want to do needs review. The reason I have that status set up, and this is going to be great for anyone who does a consultation, anybody who does a consultation, I would highly recommend putting in a needs review because when you're done with a consultation, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. When you're done with the consultation, you have no idea how that consultation is going to go. And more importantly, Dubsado does not know how your consultation went. It's not listening into the phone call and saying, oh, it sounds like they're wanting to move forward. Let's go ahead and activate this workflow. So needs review is excellent after a consultation is over. So that way I can come here and look at everyone I've done a consultation with and decide, do I want them to start the next workflow? Do I want them to go on to a not a good fit workflow? Do I want to put them in a uh, kind of a anticipating workflow, like not sure if they're wanting to move forward. I can now make a move here and I can see everyone who fits into that status. So another thing that I want you to realize before we uh, knock out this next project status change is in this workflow. Remember, I also have a questionnaire that I'm sending them once they book a call now. That's not really important to me to know whether or not they fill out the questionnaire. I don't really need that as a status, so I'm not going to make a status for that. This is why I was saying earlier that your statuses can be as granular as you want them to be or as macro. It's whatever's important to you. If them getting this questionnaire is important to you, then you could do you know, questionnaire sent or questionnaire completed if you want to. But for me, that's not really important. So I'm not making it a status. So it really is up to you as to how deep you want those statuses to go into your workflow. But my next one is 
once the appointment is over, I, I want to be in that status of needs review so I can review it, say, okay, the consultation went really well. I'm going to start them on this next workflow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say add action, change project status, same thing as before, immediately after the appointment has ended, and we're going to watch that consultation just like before. We're still watching that consultation. Now, once that consultation is over, I want to move them now into needs review. So that way, anytime I'm done with a consultation, they're immediately going into that section so I can go there, look it over and say, okay, where am I going to now put these people based off of how that consultation went? So we'll click apply. Chronologically, where this is going to fit is with this task that we have. So remember, a task is getting generated for me to say, hey, decide where this person needs to go. But I also have kind of more reinforcement here where it's also going to put the project in that status. So now I have two things that are reminding me. If I go to my projects page, it's going to be in the needs review status and I'm getting a task created that says, hey, decide how things are going. And those are both firing at the same time. So this workflow is doing a lot of work for me right now that I can automate into the system here. That's something else that I want to mention as well, because some people have asked this project statuses are 100 percent automated. There is no approve a project status change. You are telling the workflow once this happens, move the project. So project status changes are not something that you do manually. It's your workflow is going to do that for you and kind of do the uh, clerical work, if you will, and move them down that timeline. OK, so that is all that I have in my inquiry workflow, because the next thing that I have in my statuses here is proposal and contract sent. And that's in my booking workflow. So as far as my inquiry, really all that I had was just these four. And again, I'm going to show you the check availability uh, at the end of the webinar. But these first four, that's really all that's in my inquiry phase. Proposal contract sent through these here and to the right, that's more of my booking phase. So we're going to jump to that workflow now. So. I'm going to go into workflows. We're going to go to the booking workflow here and we're going to build those status changes into this workflow now. So my first status is proposal contract sent. So that's going to be kind of the same idea as when I sent my scheduler template in my last workflow. So here I'm going to say add action, change pro project status, immediately after all previous actions are complete. So again, it's once the proposal has been sent, but we don't have a trigger for that. So we're going to default to after all previous actions are complete and we're going to put it in proposal contract uh, sent, which is right here. And we'll click apply where we're going to move this to is very similar to the consultation. We're going to move this right up underneath when that proposal goes out. So it's a reaction to that proposal and contract going out to the client. Now, the next one that I have here, uh, let me go back to my projects page, is follow up. Now, this is a really great one to have if you're planning on watching to see if they fill out a certain form because in Dubsado, remember, we have the trigger that if they don't fill out a form, I can send an email to them. But what I can also do is move the project into the follow up status if they don't fill out that form. So here's what we can do. If we go into the workflow now, we'll go back to that booking workflow here. Once these follow ups go out, we talked about the follow ups yesterday. So if you are looking at this and you're saying, whoa, what are all these different follow ups? We talked about them at length yesterday. So when all of these follow ups are happening, we have our first one happening three days after they don't fill out the proposal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my project status change at the same time. So here's what's happening. When it hits three days after they haven't filled out the proposal, 
it's going to email them the proposal again and the workflow is going to move them into the follow-up status because that's technically where they're at right now and you can do this anytime someone has not filled out a form so what we're going to do is we're going to say add action change project status and we're going to say three days after they have not filled out their form and we're going to watch the proposal just like what we were doing with the consultation we're going to watch the proposal and if they don't fill out the proposal after three days i want to move them into the follow-up section because now i know that they're going to be receiving these follow-ups because they have not completed their proposal yet so if i do this and i click apply where this goes chronologically is going to be let's just say right after they get that first follow-up email so these two things are happening at the same time they haven't filled it out after three days the workflow is going to send them the proposal again and pick up the project and move it into follow-up so it's doing all of that at the same time so that's how you can use a follow-up status if you want to, let's say, watch the proposal or watch a questionnaire that you've sent out to them. You can do that because we have the trigger after form is not completed. Let's move them into this status. The next one that we have, I keep doing that. Let me go back to uh, the statuses here, is awaiting signature. Now, this one, um, this one is really interesting because that's going to be based off of if they have filled out the proposal, but they have not signed the contract yet. Now, this one is a little interesting here because it's not really watching the contract necessarily. What we're doing is we're watching the proposal that went out. Once they submit that proposal, then it's going to go into awaiting signature because technically they're at the contract stage at that point. So this status is really great for if anyone is seeing people fill out a proposal, but they're not signing their contract. You could have an awaiting signature there because it's that in between of they get the proposal, but they haven't quite signed their contract yet. They're at that in between stage. So what I'm going to do here is go back to my workflow. I'm going to go to my booking and in here, I'm going to click add action. And then I'm going to say change project status immediately after they fill out their proposal. So we're going to say after form is completed, we're going to watch that proposal and we're going to move them into a waiting booking and we'll go down there or awaiting signature sorry and we'll put that there now where this is going to go chronologically here these are all if they have not filled out their proposal so where it should go is probably right after that so technically right in there because this is after they sign their contract so it's they haven't filled out their proposal oh they filled out their proposal now so now let's move into i'm waiting for that signature to get uh to get locked in and then my next one is once they have signed the contract now if all of this you're saying i don't really need all of these different bells and whistles i just need to know when they sign their contract i'm going to show you exactly how to do that here what we're going to do is we're going to say add action change project status immediately after they sign their contract that's the flow change project status immediately after contract is signed we're going to move them into you guessed it contract sign so that way the moment that they put that signature in there i can actually uh have it move into that status and that's going to go we'll say we'll just say right here after the other project status change so project status change once they filled out the proposal and I'm awaiting that signature. It's kind of like the scheduler where I'm awaiting for them to be booked. And then once they do that, then I want to have another project status change. Okay. So that's all we have. Actually, there's one more that we need here, which I'll, uh, which I'll put in here. Well, let me think here. Actually, no, we're going to put that in the booked. We'll put that in the booked workflow. Um, let me think that there yes we're gonna put that into the booked workflow i don't think we have any other ones here 
Um, let me see, contract signed is our last one. So now, once they get through that booking workflow, now remember from yesterday, we're watching for the contract to get signed and the deposit to be paid with that hold. Once they get through there, now we're going to move them into deposit paid once that next workflow starts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my workflow. We're going to go to the booked workflow now. And if this workflow is starting, it's only because they've signed their contract and paid their deposit because this workflow, we talked about daisy chaining that yesterday. This workflow can only start if they've gone through that in or the booking workflow. So at the top of this workflow, the moment this starts, what we're going to do is we're going to click add action, change project status, just like before. Once this workflow starts now, we're going to change them into deposit paid. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say after workflow started and I'm going to say move them into deposit paid and chronologically where this should go is up at the very top. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to drag it all the way up to the very top. So that way on workflow number two, they sign the contract, pay the deposit, it starts this workflow and then it goes into booked there. So that's kind of the flow in between those two workflows. Okay. Then the next one, we'll go back here is welcome packet sent. In that instance, this could be welcome email sent or portal email sent. This is going to be the status of I've sent them their portal information. So where this is going to go is going to be after my portal email goes out to them. So let's go back to the workflow here and we're in the booked workflow now. Remember from yesterday, we talked about uploading things into the portal. We talked a lot about that yesterday. So a lot of these actions here all the way up to where I'm sending out the client portal information. All of this is just the workflow working in the background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say add action, change project status, and the trigger on this is going to be once the portal email has gone out to the client. Do we have that trigger available? No, we don't. So what are we going to use after all previous actions are complete? If you've been going to every webinar, you're probably starting to catch on to that theme of if there's not a good trigger for it, it's after all previous actions are complete. And we're going to change this to welcome packet sent, or it could be welcome email or portal email, however you want to do it there. Okay. So where this goes chronologically is going to be right after my portal email goes out, which is right here. So portal email goes out, then it moves into welcome packet sent or welcome email sent. It goes right in there after that portal email goes out to them. Now, the next ones that I'm going to do, we didn't get to this part yesterday in the workflow. So before I add in any more project status changes, I want to continue with the rest of this workflow and explain all of this built out. So the rest of the project status changes that are that we're going to do here is all centered around the project date. Remember on our projects page, we have some statuses. Let me go back to my projects page. We have statuses that are all based around time frame according to the project date. Now, because we have project date triggers, we can use project status changes to watch that date. And when it gets to a certain amount of time before that project date, we can pick up the project and move it in there. So with the workflow, what I have written out here, and if you've downloaded the complete template, you know kind of the different things of what we're doing at the end of this workflow. Uh, we have a three month check in email that's going out to them, and that's 12 weeks before the project start date because three times four weeks would be 12. So 12 weeks before the project start date, a two month check in scheduler is going out to them eight weeks before that's a two month mark. And then one month before, four weeks before, we have one last check-in email. Then four weeks after the project is over, we're going to send them a review questionnaire. Actually, that should be one week. It shouldn't be four. Let me change that to one. That's actually what it should be. 
one week after the project is over, I'm going to send them out a review questionnaire. So a week past the wedding, they get a questionnaire. Then I want to mail a thank you card to them four weeks after. Then I'm going to send out my anniversary a year after the project is over. Now we had some questions about this. I think it was either session two or three about should you archive the project first and then have the anniversary email go out? You should actually have every email and task and action that you need to have happen go before the archive project because when you archive a project, it actually pauses the workflow and shuts the workflow down. So no other things are going to go out once you archive it. So archive project should be at the very, very end once you're done with everything that's happened here. So that's kind of the rest of my flow. But what we're going to do here is as these emails are going out to the client, I can actually update my project to follow suit with what's happening. So for example here, if I want to send out that three month check-in email and move them into that status, I could say add action, change project status, and we'll say 12 weeks before the project date, same trigger there, we're gonna move them into three months out. So that means the moment when you have your project date set, 12 weeks prior to that project date, this is going to update them into three months out. And chronologically, again, I like to reorganize where this goes. This is going to go right here. So the three month check-in email goes out and then it updates that status right after. Now, two more things here. I'm not gonna finish the rest of this here because you kind of get the idea of three months out, two months out, one month out, you kind of get the idea there. Something that's important to know is technically, I don't have to have just one booked workflow. What I could do if I wanted to is everything that's in the booked workflow is all the way up to the wedding. And then if I wanted to have like an offboarding workflow, that's everything after the wedding is over, I could technically cut off the last little bit of this workflow and make it another workflow if I wanted to. If this is too intimidating and it looks really long, I could splice it up and just make another workflow phase. And then immediately after the wedding is over, I could have it start that next workflow. So you don't have to be tied into one big book workflow. You could have four different phases, five different phases if you want to. It, it really is up to you on how you want that to happen. But here's what is really important. Once that wedding is over, you don't want to archive them, but you also don't want them to be sitting in that this week because that's really what would happen. You'd have the wedding there. They'd be in this week. And then if you don't have another status after that, it's either this week or you archive them. So in your projects page, if you want to do anything that is after a project is over, kind of post project or past if you want to, you can make another status over here. And while you're waiting for that anniversary email to go out and wait for that time, you basically can make this status over here that everyone will hang out in until it gets archived. So here's what you would basically do with like a post event uh, status here. If you go to templates and then workflows and we'll go to the booked workflow here, basically what you're going to do is you're going to click add action, change project status, and we can move this to the post wedding status. When this is going to happen is once the wedding is over, obviously, because it's post wedding. So what I can say is we could just say one day after the project is over, after the project end date, it's going to be moved into post wedding. That's basically what we're telling it. The day after the wedding, it moves into after or moves into post wedding here. So I'll click add action and then chronologically where this is going to go would be we have one week after the project end date and this is four weeks before so it would go in between those so i'm going to drag this right there 
So the moment that that wedding gets over, whatever date that is, it's going to move it into post wedding. And then all of this, the review questionnaire, send them a thank you card, anniversary email, all of those things are going to happen in the post wedding status. If I wanted to make more statuses, I could, but all of that's going to function in the post wedding status. And then once all of that's happened, it's going to archive the project there. So that's how you can utilize those statuses. Now, two more things, and then we're going to wrap up for the day. Tags, how you can use these in the workflow versus manually adding them into the project. If we go to my inquiry workflow, if they're going down this route from the lead capture form, which is what we're going to talk about to wrap all of this up, how do we bring all this together and have this start from the lead capture form? If they click on, I'm interested in doing a wedding, we talked about this day one, when they go to a lead capture form and they say, oh, I'm interested in a wedding, we want them to get a wedding tag because we know if they're clicking on that, they want to do a wedding. So in this wedding workflow, if you have your workflows broken up into these categories, what I can do is edit this workflow here and say, add action. And I'm going to use add tag as my action here. And I'm just going to do this the moment the workflow starts. Because remember, lead capture form gets filled out. It starts this workflow down the wedding path. So I'm just going to tag it as wedding right from the very beginning. So I'll do zero days after the workflow has started. And I'm going to put my wedding tag on there. And I'll click apply. Now, the reason that it's important to do this right off the bat is because if we go all the way, we'll put this at the very top up there, just so wedding inquiry, you get tagged as wedding right away because we know it's going to be a wedding workflow because they selected it from the lead capture form. The reason you want to do it at this moment is because when you're on your projects page, if you're looking at your leads, I would be able to look immediately because it's starting from the beginning and see, oh, they're an anniversary lead. Oh, they are an engagement lead or they are a wedding lead because that inquiry workflow has a tag in it. So the moment they get dropped in here and that inquiry workflow starts running, it's going to put that tag on there right away for them. So now instead of tagging them only once they become a book job, I can do it at the beginning and I can see, okay, these are the types of leads that I have. So let's wrap all of this into one present here. When you have your workflows built, so let's just, I haven't added in all the different project status changes in my uh, booked workflow, but let's pretend that we have all of this set up. How you bring all of this together is when I go to my lead capture form, or your public proposal. If you're using a public proposal and just have the default workflow, same idea. Now I'm going to come to my lead capture form. I'm going to go to the what type of session are you interested in? We talked about this day one. What type of session are you interested in? And now where I have wedding, engagement, or anniversary, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start my wedding inquiry workflow. So that way, when they're filling out this form and they say, I'm interested in a wedding, it's going to make that project and then it's going to start that inquiry workflow in their project and start getting them going. This right here is basically what Dubzato is all about. You have a form, some way that people can get a hold of you. We talked about this day one and your different entry points. Someone comes, they fill out a lead capture form, they fill out a proposal, they're put into Dubzato. The workflows start running based off of how you have them timed, and it's also going to move them down that timeline at the exact same time. So the question that I probably hear more than any other question is, I'm trying to maximize my Dubzato use. How do I know that I'm taking full advantage of what Dubzato has to offer? This is how you can know. If you have a form on your website or a public proposal lead capture form, however they're coming into Dubzato, and you know in the background that you have all of your bases covered, that's how you know you're using Dubzato correctly. 
you know that I could be out doing a photo shoot, let's say, and someone comes to my website and they say engagement, and I know in the back of my mind that the workflows are doing what they're supposed to do. Another good question you can ask yourself to see if you're prepared is, let's say that 20 people fill out your lead capture form at one time. Are you prepared for that? Do you have your workflows in a place where you are comfortable with? It's okay if 50 people actually come in and, and submit. I know that I have everything set up in the background that's going to actually work for me. That's a good question to ask yourself. Now, one thing that we're going to do in this lead capture form, because remember the very first status that I have here is check availability. What you can do is if you want to put that into your workflow as a change project status immediately after the workflow starts, the inquiry workflow starts, you can do that. But what you can also do is on your lead capture form, I'll go back to my lead capture here and go to settings. You'll see right here where you can actually tell the lead capture form, every person that fills out this form, send them to this project status. So what this means is every person who fills out this form, the moment they fill it out, they're going to be dropped into the check availability status. So I don't really need it in my workflow. I could put it in there if I want to, but the lead capture form actually has a way where it will send every inquiry into that particular status. So they fill it out, check availability, fill it out, check availability. So now anyone who's in here, I know that that's where they're at in their workflow, if that makes sense there. So that's essentially what you can do from a lead capture perspective is have the lead capture actually put them in that mix there. So that in essence is how you can set up your workflows in Dubsado. Now, again, there's going to be little nuances here and there where you might have to come up with a creative solution for things. But if you follow the guidelines that we've covered over these past couple days here, this is going to get you extremely close to having everything all set up in Dubsado. It'll get you 95 to 100 percent of the way there, minus maybe a couple caveats for your specific business. But that, in essence, is how you set up your workflows and get them to work in sync with these statuses here. One last thing, actually, because I just thought of it, is filtering that I want to talk about here. So why is it important to have your statuses and tags all in place here? Because now what I can do is this. I can look at everyone who is consultation booked here, and I can see the different people of who I'm going to be talking to. And what else you can do here is, let's say we go to our job section, okay? We have a lot of different projects that are in here. Let's say, for example, I want to see all of my jobs, my booked projects that are my wedding projects. I can click on my job status and I can come over here to filter in the projects page. I'll click on that here and I can filter by tag. So I can come in here and I can say, let me see all of my wedding clients and it's going to populate only people that have that tag on it. I could do the same thing with deposit paid. I want to see all of my deposit paid people who are wedding clients. I can come over here, filter, let me see all of my wedding people, and it's only going to pull up people with that tag on it. This is why organization is so crucial to your projects page. You should know where everybody is at at all times inside of your projects page. If you have it set up the right way, I can see where every single person is at, what they need to do, what type of client I'm working with, where they're at. It's all supposed to be here on the projects page for you. The other cool thing about this is that whatever list is populating here. So right now it's just this project that's assigned to me. I can click export right next to that new project button and I can export out a CSV of everyone who fits these specifications, deposit paid and wedding. I can actually export a list of all of those projects in a CSV file. 
that's something. And if it's for bookkeeping purposes that you're trying to find these particular clients, if it's for uh, reporting purposes, just to get an idea of who are the leads that we have in this category, you can export out a list based off the status that they're in and the tags that you have here. So that's a great way if you need to export things, you can do all of that from the projects page, but you wanna make sure you're organized first.